Have you ever found yourself in a sales meeting with a potential customer and everything seems to be going okay? They're saying, yeah, we could really see ourselves using your product and da 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 da. But when it comes to actually signing the deal, closing and actually collecting revenue from the prospect, they just suddenly go quiet or they just get cold feet and disappear. And after training thousands of salespeople and business development people around the world, Here's what I've realized. The problem is closing. You see, there's gonna be a big difference between sales and closing. For sales, a lot of times, you know, people go into a sales meeting and they offer free consulting and they just kinda answer questions the customer has and tries to help them as much as possible, hoping that in the end, they will get the business. But in reality, sales is very different from closing because when you are focused on closing, sure, you're helping your customer, but at the end, you're making sure that the customer makes a concrete decision on whether or not they want to buy and hopefully if you've done the job right they actually close at the end and this is where most sales and business development people struggle with the actual closing part of the sales cycle so in this video I'm gonna show you some of my best closing strategies that you can implement right away to start getting results and make sure you watch this video until the end because if you don't know how to close you're gonna waste your time going into sales meetings and you know just dealing with tire kickers and people who aren't really serious and buying your product or service. And I'm gonna show you exactly what to do, exactly what to say to actually close that deal. And this is gonna be extremely applicable if you are in any type of sales role, like an account executive, business development rep, sales development rep, account manager, or even if you are an entrepreneur because the foundations of closing are gonna be the same. And I'm gonna show you all the secrets right here in this video. My name is Patrick Dang, welcome to my channel where we're gonna talk about all things sales and make sure to give this video a big like, subscribe, turn on notifications if you wanna see more modern sales video like this. So let's go ahead and get this started. The first point we gotta cover is setting up for the close and I have a question for you guys. When it comes to closing, when do you think closing actually happens? Do you think it happens in the beginning of a call, the middle, or maybe the end? Go ahead and leave it in the comments and let me know where you think closing happens. Now, to answer that question for you, most people believe that closing actually happens at the end of the call where they ask for the business. But in reality, closing, right, the art of getting someone to actually uh, motivate them and get them to sign a deal happens throughout the entire conversation, whether it's over the phone or in person. So that means you're closing the moment you shake someone's hand and you meet them in the middle of the conversation and at the end, because the entire time when you are having a sales meeting, your only goal is really to set the prospect up, meaning setting the customer up so that when you actually ask for the business at the end, it's gonna be a lot more smoother. But to get that close at the end, you have to set it up way in the beginning, at the beginning of the conversation. And you might be wondering, okay, well, how exactly can you set up for a close at the beginning of the conversation? And how you do that is you want to ask questions, okay? You wanna ask questions way in the beginning of the meeting, right in the beginning, to identify the customer's pain. And the reason is because, if you didn't know, the strongest emotion to get someone to take some type of action, whether it's just to do something or buy something, is pain, okay? I'll give you an example. The other day, I went surfing at the beach and I got a lot of water, salt water in my eyes. And you know, I thought it was okay, but then when I went to sleep and the next morning, my eyes were hurting so much I literally could not open them, right? So I, I was like walking around like this and, and I just couldn't see anything. I was in so much pain and it felt like I was dying, okay? So in that moment in my life, I was in so much pain that, think about it, how much money do you think I would be willing to pay someone like a doctor or a pharmacist to give me something to make that pain go away? And you bet I would be willing to pay a lot of money, right? Especially if I feel like I'm dying and I can't open my eyes. So. In that situation, I'm willing to pay a lot of money to make my eyes better and make all that pain go away. So now when we apply it into sales, it's the exact same thing. In everyday life or in you know someone's career or their business life or in their business particularly, everybody is experiencing some type of pain and they're willing to pay money to make that pain go away, similar to how I'm willing to pay money to make the pain in my eyes go away. But to actually identify the pains, you have to ask these questions to even understand the customer and see where they're coming from because people aren't gonna really give you their pains right off the bat. They're not gonna say, go into a sales meeting and be like, hey Patrick, here's all my problems. One, two, three, can you solve them for me? It doesn't really work like that. Usually they come into a meeting and they say, hey, how are you? And well, you know, and they just have a little small talk, but it's your job as a sales and business development person to identify that pain. So for example, let's say you own a, a development 
app agency, right? So you go into other companies and you develop their apps and basically they're outsourcing um, software development uh, to you, okay? So if you go into a company and you say, hey, you know, we offer app development services and this is what we can do, blah, 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 blah. A lot of times they're not gonna buy and a lot of times they're not gonna be interested because there's no pain, right? Just because you can do the work doesn't mean you're solving a problem. So instead of just pitching and saying all these things about you know how great you are you want to reverse it and say like hey look uh, company or prospect just curious you know have you guys ever tried developing your own app before and they might say yeah we've tried it but it didn't work and then you say okay well that's kind of interesting why didn't it work exactly and then they start going into the reasons well we try to hire a couple engineers but they just weren't good at the job and they cost a lot of money because you know they were junior but we we're trying to cut costs but in the end it was just a complete waste of time and then you see now you're starting to get pain, right? You say, oh, they wasted money, they wasted time, they have some hurt in them. And then you start asking more questions and I, you can say something like, well, you know, why exactly did you hire those people if they weren't really qualified? And then the prospect might say, well, we hired them because, you know, we just didn't have a network of uh, engineers that we can trust. So we just went for the cheapest price and we just hired some kids out of college, right? And you start getting more and more depth into the pain. And then, you know, you make that person hurt. You make them realize like, oh man, they really made a mistake in the past and they don't want to do it again. So once you ask all those questions, you're setting it up so that when you start pitching your services on app development to outsource all the development work, you can say something like, hey, look, you know, uh, you try something in the past, I understand that, and it didn't work, cool. But what if I said that you can actually develop an app for a cheaper price, but have higher quality engineers working on it to make sure the product is actually good? How would that be to you? And then they would say like, well, that would actually sound really good. Well, what exactly do you have to offer, right? And you start getting into that conversation. But you see, to even get to that point, I have to set it up before I can even start pitching my product or service because if you start pitching in the beginning, people don't experience pain, they don't understand the value to why they should be listening to you. But if you ask these questions, understand their problems, and then pitch your product or service as a solution to their problem, then they start really thinking about like, hmm, maybe this guy is onto something. So now we're gonna move into the next part of the close and that's actually asking for the close, right? So this particular video is not about how to pitch. I have another video about that. Go ahead and check out the link in the description or somewhere on the screen for you know exactly how to pitch. But when it comes to the close, you know, after you pitch, this is what you're gonna say once you, you know, share what value you give to the customer. People love one-liners, and I know you guys want some one-liners of exactly what to say, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you that right now. So if you wanna close, you wanna ask for the money, uh, after you pitch, you can say something like this. Based on everything we talked about so far, uh, do you feel we might be able to be a good fit to work together? Right, and it's a question. And basically you pause right there and then the prospect, it's their turn to talk and they're gonna think about that and they're gonna think about everything you talked about in the meeting and they're gonna, they're gonna say something like, yeah, possibly, possibly. So now you're getting the feel, right? If they say, you know, yes, let's get started right away, boom, the deal's already done. But if they say something like, yeah, maybe, it seems like we might be a good fit, possibly. And then, so you, you're in the right direction, right? So after you, you get a confirmation that they're actually interested, you can say something like, all right, well, what would you like to do now? and you pause, okay? And when you pause, you signal to the other person that it's their turn to talk. You have to really pause and, and let them speak. And so once they speak, they're gonna say, well, um, what would I like to do now? Well, how exactly do I work with you? And then you earn permission to kind of share your pricing and with the process it takes to actually work with you. So after they ask you, well, how exactly can you work together? You can say, hey, look, Typically, we're gonna charge $9,000 a month for these services, but I really feel like, you know, we're a really good fit to work together. I like you and I feel like we can actually get you some real results. So if you can actually make the decision by the end of this week, I can actually lower the price from $9,000 to $7,000 and we can get started right away. And the reason is because, you know, I like you, but at the same time, I don't wanna go back and forth and, and trying to find the right price. I'd rather just give you a discount, a fair price, and you know, but it's only valid if you are able to make the decision by the end of the week. So in that situation, you're, you're basically, um, what, what you're doing is that you're setting the price high and then you're giving them a discount so they feel like, oh, you know, this guy really likes me, he's giving me a discount, and you might be giving them a discount, right? And then from there, if they can make the decision by the end of the week, boom, they're gonna get the discount. If they cannot make the decision by the end of the week, then you go back to your normal pricing, which is what, in the, for this example, it was $9,000. Now, if you know that the prospect can make the decision right there on the phone, right? Let's say you sell maybe something cheaper and it's easier for them to make a decision. You could say like, hey, look, if you're able to make the decision by the end of the call, we will give you the special discount right now. But it's only available if you can make the decision on the call. So, you know, whatever timeline you wanna create, this is the magic. You can either do it 
you make the decision on the call if you know that people are willing to buy right there, right then. But other times in the sales meeting, you can get the feel like maybe this person isn't gonna make the decision on the call. Maybe they have to get approval from somebody else. So you can say by the end of the week or by the end of the month. And what you wanna do is you wanna incentivize them to actually make a decision, whether it's a yes or no, using these timelines. Now, the reason why you wanna do this is because most people don't use this technique. They don't use timelines, they don't use discounts, and they'll just say like, hey, look, if you wanna work with me, uh, just let me know. And then what happens is the customer or the prospect doesn't really get back to them. There's no reason for why they should respond. And then a week goes by, a month goes by, they don't get the deal, they don't know why. And it's because there's no timeline. So you really have to make a timeline and you have to give people an incentive to why they should follow your timeline. And if you're really giving them a discount and they feel like, wow, this guy really is paying attention to me and he's trying to get me the best deal, they won't ghost you because you know, you're really trying to help them out. Now, if they love everything with the deal and they're gonna make the decision on time, they sign the deal, boom, you are done, you got the deal, congratulations. Now, for people who have objections, right, we're gonna show you how to handle objections, and of course, in a lot of sales, actually, you're always gonna have objections. So, how exactly do you handle it when people, you know, don't say yes right away? So let's say you do all these things that I said, and the prospect says, hey, look, you know, um, I'm just not really sure if this is the right fit for me, right? They say, give you a maybe, right? Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna get to the truth of why exactly they're not buying, right? Because you wanna yes, or no, a no is okay if it's not a good fit, but you don't want a maybe because a maybe is like, it's just a waste of time. So on the call or in the in-person person meeting, here's what you wanna to say to really get a feel of, you know, whether or not someone is a customer or not. So you can say something like this. Hey, look, now I'm not trying to force you to buy anything, but from our conversation so far, it seemed like we were a really good fit to work together because of these reasons. And then you list out the reasons. Now, because of this, I'm actually really curious. Uh, can you let me know exactly what you would need to see if we were to move forward on this? So I'm acknowledging that the prospect has an objection. I'm not forcing them to buy anything. My goal is just to get the truth of why exactly they're not sure, right? Again, I said, hey, look, I'm not trying to force you to buy anything. I'm just trying to understand where you're coming from so that we're on the same page, right? And then from there, what I say is, look, I don't wanna push you into anything, but it seemed like I might be able to bring you a lot of value, but it seems like you're unsure about something. So what exactly do you need to see before you move forward on something like this? And then they're gonna say, well, Patrick, I need to see X, Y, Z, right? For example, I need to have a guarantee. I need to be sure that I get results. I need to make sure that if we do this, that it's gonna work and I don't waste my money and time, right? Whatever the objections are, that is the opportunity for them to tell you. So once they tell you what these objections are, then you can handle these objections one by one. But before you can even handle objections, you have to be able to earn the right for the person to feel comfortable to tell you their problems, right? Because a lot of times, salespeople are so pushy that the customer kind of clams up when they're doing that and they just, they're just like, okay, I'm out of here. I don't wanna to talk to this person. He's just trying to force me to buy something. But instead of being aggressive and pushy and you try to make it seem like, and you are, um, you're just trying to look out for them and do what's best for them. People are a lot more open, more comfortable, and they're gonna tell you all these objections and then you can, one by one, handle them. And again, it's not about like forcing someone to buy something, right? You don't wanna trick someone into buying your product or service because if you do that, they're just gonna get mad, they're gonna ask for a refund and they're gonna tell everybody like this company is not good because they have bad salespeople. Instead, you wanna work with the customer, find a solution, right? It's like solution selling and then actually, you know, deliver on those solutions and make their lives so much better. Because when you're selling from that position, sales becomes a lot less sleazy, a lot less sales oil, salesman style. And it's more about helping other people, helping come up with solution and providing value. And suddenly sales becomes really cool because you're actually helping someone um, you know, in their business and in their everyday life. So that said, that's gonna be the general strategy when it comes to closing. If you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like subscribe for more videos like this. And I'm gonna be dropping new videos every week. So you wanna make sure you hit that notification bell. And if you wanna take your sales game to the next level, I got a free training for you. It's amazing. Click the link in the description to get access to that free and deaf training on how to sell anything to anyone. I promise you're gonna love it.
And let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video, what's the number one thing that you took away? Uh, do you feel like this is something applicable for your specific role? And I'm curious to know what results you guys are getting from using uh, these type of techniques. And if you wanna learn more about closing and high ticket closing, make sure you check out the video somewhere on the screen on my video on exactly what high ticket closing is. So with that said, my name is Patrick Dang. Hope you guys got some value out of this video and I'm gonna see you guys in the next one.